I want to speak about Rabbi Melech HaMoshiach and the Orthodox Jewish Bible, especially three of the Igrot Kodesh of Rav Shaul. Uh, first Timothy, Second Timothy, and Titus, which are meant to guard the spiritual heritage with sound doctrine, warning against false teachers, and <laughs> making it clear that we want good leaders to be put in place to watch over the flock of God. And so these letters exhort uh, these assistants, these co-workers of Rav Shaul to preserve the spiritual heritage, to keep the faith, to be strong under adversity. Uh, he uses in the first, uh, well, actually, the second epistle, he talks about this, uh, the metaphor of a soldier, chapter 2, verses 3 to 4, a farmer, chapter 2, verse 6, an experienced worker, chapter 2, verse 15, and also household utensils, chapter 2, verses 20 to 21. He uses these metaphors to try to make Timothy understand he has to imitate um, as a strong and worthy servant of the good news, the Basura Sage Olah, what he's seen and heard in Rav Shaul's life. Because he tells us that in the last days, people will degenerate. Look at uh, uh, especially um, chapter chapter 3, verses 1 to 9. I just want to, oh, Timothy says, the deposit, the uh, picadon, the, the, the deposit entrusted to you, be shomer over turning away from profane, empty utterances and oppositions of the falsely named das or knowledge. And this verse, verse 20 of chapter 6 of 1 Timothy, the letter to Timotheus, this is where he speaks of the Deposit. We have been given a deposit. And he says, it is because of these things also that I suffer. But I'm not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed, and I've been persuaded that he is able to stand shomer guarding until Hayom Hahu, the Picadon, the deposit entrusted to him by me. Notice. When he writes these letters, and they're dictated, and they're written down, in the natural, he has no way of knowing that they will be preserved. But he believes that God will, will, will preserve them. And God did. He, he tells this young uh, Timothy, Timotheus, Follow the pattern of sound Orthodox Jewish Devarim, which you heard from me in Imuna and Ahava in Rivi Melech HaMoshiach Yeshua. Yeshua. Stand Shomer over the Orthodox Jewish Pikadon. There's that word again, deposit, entrusted to you through the Ruach HaKodesh dwelling in us. There is a deposit that we have to guard. And our preaching has to reflect that deposit. What things you have heard from me through Edim Rabim, through many witnesses, these things commit to Anashim 
Nehemanim, faithful men of Zerizus, reliability, who will be qualified, Morim, to teach others also. So this these things were not done in a in a uh, corner. There were faithful men who were witnesses. And when we preach, there are faithful witnesses who hear the faithful word of God, which came to us from faithful men, and we are to entrust these words to faithful men and women. And that means that the Devar Emes, the word of truth, is trustworthy. If anyone aspires to the congregational office of Mashkiach Ruhani, spiritual overseer over the Adat Hashem, the congregation of God, uh, he, desi he desires a good task. And the qualifications, uh, among other things, are that he not be a neophyte in the Imunah of Moshiach. And that this is also true of the Messianic Shamashim. And that we get this wonderful verse at the end of this uh, first letter of chapter 3. Uh, he says, if I delay, you may have das, knowledge of the halacha in the base Hashem, which is the Adad Ha'el Ha'i, the community of the living God, the Amud, the pillar and Yesod foundation of Ha'emus, of the truth. And confessedly great is the Sod of Hasidus. Elohim was manifested in Basar, was vindicated or proven just by the Ruach HaKodesh, was seen by Malachim, was proclaimed among the nations, was believed on in the world, was taken up in Kavod. There's the whole thing in one verse. And uh, in the latter days, we know there's going to be apostasy. People's hearts will be hardened. They will not endure sound doctrine. They will want their ears tickled. They will not preach the Basura Sake Allah. And Timothy is being warned to be on the lookout for a for these uh Mare Sheker, these false teachers. And uh we know it says and he's reminding him in the second letter, which is uh, about his martyrdom, which is imminent. Because this, this particular imprisonment is harsher. He's in the Mamertine dungeon. This is what I based the rabbi from Tarsus on. And in this letter, he reminds Timothy that from infancy you have known the Kitve HaKodesh, which are able to make you Hacham with a view to Yeshua Salokenu through Emunah and Rivi Melech HaMoshiach Yahushua Yeshua. The entire Kitve HaKodesh is Hashem breathed. God breathed into Adam and he became a Nefesh Chaya. But God breathed into the scriptures. That's why they are living and active and sh sharper than any two-edged sword. They are God breathed. And they are useful for hora'ah, for teaching, for reproof, for correction, for training in, in righteousness, in tzedek. That the Ish may be proficient 
having been equipped for every one of the Monasim Tobim. Then he says, I solemnly charge you before Hashem and Moshe Yeshua, Yeshua, the eminent Shafet of the living and the dead, and by the Bias Hamoshiach and his Malhut, the, the coming of the Messiah and his kingdom. He's he's saying this is the Shofet, the, the, the judge of the living and the dead. This is the one we have to stand before. And, and then he's giving him these orders. He's saying, attend to Hatafa preaching of the Devar Hashem, be ready in season, out of season. Expose, rebuke, encourage with all long suffering and hora'ah teaching. For there will be a time when sound, haridi, orthodox, hora'ah, they will not tolerate. But according to their ta'avot, their, their lust, they will accumulate morim to tickle their ears. And from ha'emus of Hashem, they will turn their ear away, shmad. And to Agada, they will be turned aside. They're going to they're going to be wanting to hear about myths and legends and old wives' tales, but they will not want to hear the truth of God's word. But you, now he's coming back to Timothy. Exercise Rita Atmi, self control in all things. Then he says, suffer hardship. That means things might be a little tight sometimes. Then he says, do the work of a mavaser, of the basura sakeolah. Do the work of an evangelist, a herald, a mavaser. Now, you know, a herald goes everywhere. The town herald when he came into a village, he went through the entire village, not just the main street. And he cried out, whatever the message was, if the war was over, if the battle was victorious, if the king had just uh, succumbed to an illness and had just passed away, or if a new king was, uh, was uh, inaugurated in his office, coronated it was the mavaser the the herald he was the the news bringer he went from place to place shouting the news and uh that's why we're not just going to sit around on our hands in beth shalom and wait for backsliders to finally get uh, to the point where they're not going to play hooky from the services and actually show up and come in through the door. We're not going to wait for that. We're going to go down to King's Highway with our tracks and we are going to cry out. And if they don't want to hear, if they turn away, that is not our, our concern because only God can change a person's heart. But the Lord went to Philippi and he opened the mouth of Paul and then he opened the heart of Lydia to pay attention to what Paul was saying. Now, when we are on the street, Wayne will be talking, he'll be preaching and people will be walking by and they will not be paying attention. But occasionally someone's heart will be opened. There was a lady about three Sundays ago and her heart was so open to what I was saying that she actually started weeping, standing there with tears in her eyes, listening to me. Not only did she stop, and not only did she listen, but she wept. Now, she promised that she would join us on this Zoom meeting, but she hasn't done that yet. But nevertheless, that doesn't take uh, away from or detract from what I just said. We have to do the work of a mavaser. 
if I had sat around looking at the four walls of Beth Shalom and waiting for these people to show up, uh, I would never have seen the tears in her eyes. It says, do the work of a Mavaser. Fully carry out your Avodas Kodesh ministry as part of your worship. What kind of ministry? Kiruv Rihokim. The, the outreach, the bringing near the faraway ones. Then he says why it's, a, it's so important for Timothy to be on point here and do the work of a Mavaser. He says, for or because already I'm being poured out and the time for my uh, departure has come. And uh, he means that he's got to go and be with the Lord now. He's going to be martyred. And uh, there are many mitnagedim. Mitnagedim are the opponents, idle talkers and deceivers, especially the ones of the party of the Moalim Hagoyim, the false teachers, circumcisers of Gentiles, whose mouths, their mouths, it is necessary to stop who are subverting entire mishpachot families by teaching what they ought not for the sake of dishonest guilt. Uh, so we don't pay attention to Jewish agadot and the precepts imposed by the rabbis. The laws that are not from the scriptures but from the mouths of sinners we don't want to become mashumad apostate from haemus and uh, we know that all of us were once without knowledge Sorarim, disobedient, being led astray, Avadim, slaves of lusts to various Tanugot pleasures of the Olam Hazeh, spending our days in Eva, enmity, and Kina, jealousy, hated and hated and hating one another. But when the Hinva Hesed when the grace and the Ahavas Hashem Moshienu, the love of, of God our Savior, appeared to B'nai Adam, not by Sid Katenu, not by our righteousness in Masim Tovim and good deeds, which is to our Zikas or merit, but according to his Rahamim, his mercy, he granted us. Yeshua Salokenu, salvation through the mikvah mayim ruhani of rebirth and heat had shoot regeneration of the Ruach HaKodesh, which Hashem poured out on us richly. Hallelujah. And having been made Yitzhak Im Hashem, justified by the grace of God, that we might become heirs, Yorashim, in the Tikva Hahaye Olam, the hope of eternal life. Lord, I want to thank you for these words, these words that were given to Timothy and Titus. And we thank you for Titus, whom God used whenever Paul had a tough situation in Corinth or some other place, who was the man that he sent, the, the man for the tough tasks? It was Titus. He was dependable, 2 Corinthians 8, 17. He was reliable, 2, uh, 2 Corinthians 7, 6. He was diligent, 2 Corinthians 8, 17 again. 
He had a great capacity for human affection, 2 Corinthians 7, 13 to 15. He had strength and tact. And it was Titus who calmed desperate situations in the house of God. And he's a good model for us and for a minister. And we need to study his letter too, where Paul advises him on the qualifications of leaders and warns him about false teachers and proceeds to list the ideal characteristics that he should find in the house of God. And we know that Titus was in Crete. We know that Timothy was in Ephesus. We know that God used these two men to help Rav Shaul greatly. Lord, we pray right now that someone will hear this, this, this wonderful reading, basically, from the so-called pastoral epistles. These are Igrot Kodesh written to two leaders that Paul Rav Shaul was entrusting his ministry to that they would guard the good deposit that God had given him. And we thank you, Lord, that we have the Brit Hadashah today a book much reviled by ignorant men, a book not understood by unspiritual men without the Ruach HaKodesh, but a wonderful book in, that we now have in a triglot with the Hebrew-lettered Yiddish on one rung for each word with the transliterated Latin or translation uh, under the second and third rung of the triglot for each word. So each word can be properly pronounced and understood so that Yiddish is no longer a mysterious language. It is now unpacked in the most important book ever written, the Brit Hadashah. And we know, Lord, that you whistled and you brought your best people in for this. You had been saving them all along just for this. And now you're blessing them. I believe one of them in England has gotten some kind of healing blessing because he has blessed the Jews. And this man has done 70 African translations and now two or three uh, Jewish translations where he's helped me and he said to me on the Skype today that even though he had been having all this trouble, that when he went on the nine-hole golf course this morning at the end of nine holes when he's usually exhausted, he had this great energy and this sense of well-being that his heart was, was beating right. The AFib was gone. And Lord, we want to thank you that you're still in the healing business and we don't take any glory for this. We can't heal anyone. It is the Lord who does the healing. We don't call ourselves apostles. We don't say, oh, I healed so-and-so. We don't, we don't uh, dare try to find glory in these things. It is God that does this and we are his unworthy servants. And we thank you, Lord, for blessing those who bless the Jews. And we thank you, Lord, for the YiddishBible.net website, which this man was instrumental in helping us put together. And we thank you for all these people who have helped us. So we ask you, Lord, to bless all of them. And we ask you, Lord, to pour out a blessing on the United States, on all the congregations where the Bible is believed and faithfully taught, on the Commonwealth of the Republic, on the people who are serving you 
in spirit and in truth that this country will have a new birth of freedom and a new revival that will impact all 50 states and will touch people who are called to the outreach field of the world, to go to all the nations of the world and preach the gospel and establish new congregations and be what Timothy and Titus were as assistants of the Shaliach, Rav Shaul, to do the great commission work that we must do. Lord, we ask that you would bless us and help us to continue to run this race, to keep this, to keep the faith, to finish the course. Yeshua HaMashiach, come into my heart, forgive my sins, take control of my life, and I will serve you and follow you all the days of my life. I thank you for the Kapora that you made, a lamb led to the slaughter, Isaiah 53, 7, on Pesach, the blood that gets me out of Egypt, out of bondage, out of sin and death and the grave. I thank you, Lord, and I give you the glory. And everybody said, <laughs>